I'm Chris, and today we're going to paint this room. Let's do this real quick. Now a good place to start is to remove everything and anything from your walls. That includes screws, any nails that might be in your walls, any putty that might be holding up pictures or posters, all your light switch covers, all your outlet covers, and if you really want you can remove your heating vents that are on your walls, or at the very least vacuum them off. Now it's a good idea to throw a tarp down, and for some added protection for your baseboards, you can go ahead and throw some painter's tape on the top edge of it, and then tape down some paper. This is paper just from packaging materials from certain boxes and stuff. And now, you're pretty much prepped with cleaning your walls. You want to go ahead and fill any holes that are in your walls, or in my case, any little bunches of paint that came off when I was removing that putty. I don't really like that putty anymore. It does more damage than good. But you want to go ahead and fill any holes you might have. With my, in my case, my walls are plaster and lath. They're not drywall. So there might be some additional steps I have to take. After your patch is dried, you want to go ahead and either sand it or at the very least wipe off the excess dust. And now we're going to go over some painting materials that you might need. You're going to need a roller, possibly an extension handle, some sort of paint tray with a, some sort of liner, a good brush, obviously your paint stick, a way to open the paint can, maybe a mini roller and definitely another bucket, and then obviously your paint. These are the few things that you're going to need when you're painting a room. Now it's time to start mixing your paint. In the interest of time, I sped the video up here. You guys don't really want to see me mixing paint for a ridiculous amount of time. I'm also very frugal, so I'm trying to save the paint from the paint stick, and I'm trying to keep everything neat. I'm also trying to save the paint from the lid. There's actually quite a bit of paint on there, and when you're cutting in, that little bit of paint might help. Now, there was some chunky stuff in my paint. I don't know what that was, if it was just paint that was drying, but definitely get that out of there. You don't want that on your roller or anything like that when you're painting your walls. Now, after you got everything mixed, you might want to use a, a little roller for cutting in. It's not necessary, but it's a decent idea to have it. And now comes the fun part, cutting in. You want to go ahead and take your time here. I'm using the paintbrush in a way that I am just have a little tip of the paintbrush towards the top of the ceiling to deliver that paint right up there so I can get nice coverage from the transition of the wall to the ceiling. Now I have popcorn ceilings, so it's a little bit more difficult to get into every nook and cranny. I'm also painting over glossy paint, and I've heard that it's a little more difficult to paint over glossy paint. It's a little more prone to streaking when you're using the brush. I'm not too concerned about that at the moment, because I'm just really focusing on getting that paint up in the corner of the ceiling there. And then I can go over later with the brush and clean up the streaks and then go over later with the roller. But you want to go ahead and take your time, make sure you have enough paint on your paintbrush to deliver the paint from the paintbrush to the tip of the paintbrush to the corner of the ceiling. Just work slow, take your time. I've gone and taped off a whole room before, taped off the crown molding or the top of the ceiling. And in this case, with the popcorn ceiling, I really couldn't do that. And I've also found that taping takes a lot of time to where doing this, I found it a little bit easier and even a little bit faster if I just took my time when I was painting. So again, I'm working on a ladder with that little bucket that I poured the paint into. I'm dipping my paintbrush in that bucket, wiping it on the sides of the bucket so I don't have too much paint on my brush, and I'm working slowly with the paintbrush at an angle so that just the tip of it is barely touching the ceiling there, just so I can deliver the paint up there so I get a nice even coverage on the top. And then if it is streaking with the paintbrush, I'm working that over after I get the paint to the top of the ceiling. And to smooth out the texture, you can use your little roller. You want to be careful not to hit the roller on the ceiling, otherwise you're going to be painting the ceiling the same color as your walls. This really just matches the texture to the big roller once you do the entire wall. It's a faster process. You don't have to get as high with your big roller. Painting the baseboard is pretty much the same as painting the ceiling. Here, I chose not to put a tarp down and not to tape anything off, just to see if my technique was good enough. This is the last room I'm painting in my house. And again, go over everything with a roller just to match the texture. Painting around doors and windows, it's pretty much going to be the same process as everything else that you're doing. It's not difficult at all. Painting around outlets and light switches, it's a lot easier if you take the covers off. You just throw some paint on there, match the textures with the roller. Painting corners, simply throw the paint in the corner, do a little bit on the sides with your brush, and then if you want, you can match it with the roller or the big roller itself, you can get close enough to the corners. 
Now when you go to roll out your walls, you want to pour enough paint in your tray, you want to get enough paint on your roller, and then a nice little trick when you're actually going to paint the wall is to twirl your roller just a little bit so you minimize drips. I also have cardboard down when I'm doing this right there so I don't spill anything on my floor. Now here I'm going to go across the whole wall and put a nice light coat of paint on first. And I'm not working in a W fashion or anything like that. I'm just pretty much going straight up to where I cut in, straight down to where I cut in, over a little bit, straight up to where I cut in, straight down to where I cut in, maybe up and down three times, and then throwing more paint on my roller. And then I'm gonna go back over everything with a little bit more paint on my roller for the final coat. Now depending on your walls and what type of paint you use, you might have to do one more coat after this. But I've found this to be a pretty fast and effective way to paint the whole room. Cutting in definitely saves a lot of time when you're rolling out the paint on the walls with your roller. Now, there's a few things on here that I left. I had some handprints from when I was younger that I put on the walls. I left those on there because this is going to be my son's room. And I thought it would be kind of cool to say, hey, look, there's dad's handprint from when he was your age. Now, before you know it, you're going to have the whole room completed. It's going to be a nice, fast, easy, simple job. I did pretty much one to two rooms a day after work. And you come out with a pretty nice product when you're done. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Definitely share this video with your friends and don't forget to check out some of my other videos. And if you guys actually painted your room and this helped a little bit, please leave me a comment below. Thank you guys so much.